There are many things in a science experiment that we can control and change. However, we need to be careful of what we control and change so that our results is scientifically valid. So let's go over some of the experimental design features that we have to consider. So we can only change one thing at a time, one variable at a time. We call this the manipulated variable. For example, if we're to do a reaction of uh, a liquid and with a solid, we can change the amount of solid. So for our first reaction, we have one scoop of the solid. And in the second reaction, we have two scoops. The third reaction, we have three scoops. And in the fourth reaction, we have four scoops. We can then measure the speed of the reaction. And the, these results, the speed of the reaction, will be a, the responding variable. So other responding variable could be the temperature of the solution afterwards, uh, the height of the bubbles that are given off, how long the reaction takes, was there any smell, and if so, was there a stronger smell if more chemicals were used, or uh, just the, the site, what do you see? Are there more bubbles that come from having more solids or fewer bubbles with fewer solids? Other things we have to consider are called the control variables. These are the things that we have to uh, hold the same throughout the entire experiment. So we need to, for example, hold the amount of solution the same. So let's say we only use uh, a quarter cup or about 100 milliliters of the solution in all four of our experiments. That is one control variable. Another control variable would be the temperature. We have to make sure the temperature of all the solutions as well as all the solids are the same. So perhaps at room temperature. Uh, another control variable would be the different brands. If we to use, we have to use the same brand of solutions and the same brand of solid in our experiment. So the control variables are not changed. They are held constant so that they do not um, have an in, invalid results, invalid effect on their experiment. The only thing that should change our responding variable should be our manipulated variable. So as a, as a reminder, there should be only one manipulated variable in your experiment. In our example here is the scoops of the solid. And you can measure, you should measure only one responding variable. Well, for this case, it could be the, uh, the amount of time the bubbles are seen in the reaction or any smells or any sight. In some experiments, you may see two different variables and you need two different observation tables to record the two different observations. If we're to do our uh, experimental design properly, we can come up with a proper hypothesis statement. A general form of the hypothesis statement is if the manipulated variable is changed somehow, then the responding variable will also change. How so? Well, that's up to you to explain, to, to guess because of some sort of possible explanation. So in our experiment here, one possible hypothesis statement would be to say, if we use more solids, because solids is a manipulated variable, the amount of solid is a manipulated variable, then the reaction will happen longer. That's a responding variable. We're looking at how long the reaction will take because there are more chemicals to react. So that would be a, a fine example of a hypothesis statement. So this is only a general example of what an experimental design should be, but your experiment should have similar considerations.